Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. The physicist Richard Feynman is considered one of the brightest minds, and he won the 1965 Nobel Prize in Physics. But no one is perfect, and even a genius can get tricked by a simple problem. We have a quarter circle with an inscribed rectangle. Construct a diagonal of this rectangle. Let the horizontal distance from the rectangle to the circle be the distance a. Let the diagonal have a distance equal to b, and let the vertical distance between the rectangle and the circle be the distance c. The puzzle is, if r is the radius of the circle, solve for r in terms of a, b, and c. It is said that this puzzle tricked Richard Feynman, but perhaps we shouldn't judge so harshly because it would be a mistake of overthinking the problem. To get started, let's calculate the side lengths of the rectangle. We know the radius of the quarter circle is equal to r. If we subtract out the distance a, we will get the horizontal side of the rectangle is equal to r minus a. Similarly, the vertical length right here is the radius of the circle, which is equal to r. If we subtract out the vertical distance c, we will get the length of the vertical side, which is equal to r minus c. We now have a right triangle, so we can apply the famous right triangle theorem. We have that the square of r minus c plus the square of r minus a is equal to b squared. We can expand both binomials, and then we need to collect like terms. So we have 2r squared plus r multiplied by the coefficient minus 2a minus 2c, plus the remaining terms, which are all constant, which is c squared plus a squared minus b squared. This is all equal to zero. We have the canonical form of a quadratic equation with the variable r. So we can solve for the variable r. We now just need to simplify this mess, and we end up with the following equation. Furthermore, you can take one more consideration, we want the radius to be a positive value, and usually that means you're going to disregard the minus of the radical. So most likely the solution will be this. r is equal to a plus c plus the square root of the quantity 2b squared plus 2ac minus a squared minus c squared, and we want to take this whole thing and divide it by 2. Now I have tested this formula with several values, and it does seem to work. But there is a problem with the formula. It's not the most simple expression for the radius in terms of a, b, and c. It is definitely overthinking the question. So what's the correct answer? Let's go back to the beginning diagram. We have a rectangle. One of its diagonals is the distance b. So what would happen if we construct the other diagonal of the rectangle? Well, in a rectangle, its two diagonals have the exact same length. So the other diagonal must have the same length, which is equal to b. But look at this diagonal of the rectangle. It goes from the center of the circle to the arc of the circle. In other words, this diagonal is also a radius of the circle. And therefore, we have a very simple answer. r is equal to b. Now I did get a feedback that this is not expressed in terms of a, b, and c, so you could write it as the expression r is equal to a multiplied by zero plus b plus c multiplied by zero. But no matter how you put it, the simple expression is that r is equal to b, and that's the answer. But Feynman is not the only genius who has ever been fooled by a simple problem. Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, was one of the great thinkers of the 17th and 18th centuries and is known as the last universal genius, according to the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. But even Leibniz has made a mistake in the then developing field of probability. The question is if you roll two fair dice, which is more likely, a sum of 11 or a sum of 12? Leibniz reasoned that the sums are equally likely. Leibniz said there's one way to get either event. To get 12, there's just one way, which is to roll 6 plus 6. To get 11, there's also only one way, 
which is 6 plus 5. However, Leibniz was overlooking the other way to get 11, which is 5 plus 6. Leibniz was definitely wrong, and the sums are not equally likely. Here's another way to see it. Imagine we roll one dice, and it will show the six numbers from 1 to 6 with equal chance. The other dice will also show the whole numbers from 1 to 6 with equal chance. We can make a table which shows all 36 possible events which are equally likely. Imagine one dice is showing one. We can then calculate the sum with the other dice, which will go from 2 to 7. We can calculate the sums in every single row of this table. Now, how many ways can we get a sum of 11? One way is we can have 6 plus 5, and the other way will be 5 plus 6. The probability of getting a sum of 11 will be 2 divided by 36, which is approximately equal to 5.56%. Now looking at a sum of 12, there's only one way, which is 6 plus 6, so the probability of getting a sum of 12 is equal to 1 over 36, which is approximately equal to 2.78%. So while Leibniz made an egregious mistake in this probability calculation, it is worth noting that people only remember him now for being one of the inventors of calculus. So it's a good lesson to take, that even if you make a mistake, it's still okay. People will remember you more for what you did and contributed than for the mistakes you made. And now for a final puzzle. The psychologist Max Wertheimer was friends with Albert Einstein, who needs no introduction. In 1934, he wrote Einstein a letter which included the following interesting riddle. There's an old car that needs to go up and down a hill. The car is so old and so badly in shape that for the one mile ascent of the hill, it only averages 15 miles per hour. There is then a one mile descent of the hill, and because the car is going down, it might be able to go at a faster speed. So the question is, if you want to have a 30 mile per hour average for the entire two mile trip, what average speed is needed for the descent? So how do we solve this problem? Let me first go over most people's instantaneous reaction, which is a common mistake. Most people think about it like this. You have 15 miles per hour as the speed of the ascent, and let's say x is the speed of the descent. We want the average speed, so let's take the average of these numbers as a simple arithmetic average. We will take 1 half of 15 plus x, and we want that to be equal to the average speed of 30. So 15 plus x divided by 2 needs to be equal to 30. Multiply both sides of the equation by 2 and subtract 15 to solve for x, which gives that x is equal to 45 miles per hour. So at first, this seems like a very simple riddle. There's only one problem. This is not the correct answer. To illustrate why 45 miles per hour is wrong, let's go ahead and calculate the average speed for the entire trip. So suppose 45 is the speed of the descent. How much time will the entire trip take? Time is equal to distance divided by speed. So let's first calculate the time to ascend the hill. This will be equal to the distance of one mile divided by the speed of 15 miles per hour. We then need to add the time on the descent, which will be one mile for the descent divided by 45 miles per hour, which is the speed. So this is equal to one over 15 plus one over 45, which simplifies to be four over 45 hours. Now, the average speed for the entire trip will be the total distance divided by the total time. We know the total distance is 2 miles because it's 1 plus 1, and we have calculated the total time is 4 over 45. But this will work out to an average speed of 22.5 miles per hour, which is not equal to the 30 miles per hour average that we want. We are going too slow on the descent to get an average speed of 30 miles per hour. Clearly, we will need to increase the speed of the descent to average 30 miles per hour for the entire two-mile trip. 
So how fast do we need to go? Let's go ahead and do that calculation. So suppose we have an average speed of 30 miles per hour for the entire trip. We know the total distance is equal to two miles and we need to calculate the time for the entire trip. We could go ahead and solve for the time for the entire trip and we get that this is equal to two divided by 30, which equals 1 15th of an hour. As there are 60 minutes in an hour, this works out to be four minutes for the entire trip. So now let's calculate the time it takes just for the ascent. This time will be equal to the one mile distance divided by the 15 miles per hour speed. This works out to be one over 15th of an hour. As there are 60 minutes in an hour, this works out to be four minutes for the ascent. But now let's take a look at these facts. We need the entire trip to take four minutes, but we have already used four minutes for the ascent. So the only way this will be possible is if the descent takes zero minutes, but then we would need to be going infinitely fast. And we know that's not possible because nothing can go faster than the speed of light. In other words, this is not possible. This is a trick question. There's no way to average 30 miles per hour for the entire trip. This puzzle so delighted Einstein, he wrote back that not till calculating did I notice there is no time left for the way down. I love these stories because they illustrate geniuses are not some superhumans who always get all the correct answers instantaneously. Just like us, they need to work. So if you make a mistake, it's totally fine. Try, try again. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.